Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. In this video I'm going to be talking about this aquarium. Uh, this is a photo that was sent to me from the Netherlands, so stay tuned. Okay, let's get into the video. Uh, this is an email I received. I get uh, several emails, but I thought this would be just uh, a good one to bring up. Uh, because we can kill two birds with one stone with this e email. Uh, greetings from Horn, the Netherlands, from Paul. And uh, you know, I guess we don't realize that the internet really closes things up with who's watching your videos or who is not watching your videos. Anyhow, he sent me an email, and uh, his name is Paul, and he's from the Netherlands. And when I was age 14, I started with aquariums, so he's been in it for quite some time. Um, though time I stopped and started several times because of different reasons like moving, children, work, etc. Okay. Five years ago, I started again with mixing with mixed success with a Jewel Rio 125 aquarium, 80 by 40 by 40 centimeters. Found about two years ago your YouTube channel and your fascination about the explanation about an oxyfiltration system and BCB baskets. So I started in January this year with a small aquarium, 60 by 30 by 30 centimeters, with LED I had using a plenum with an Eheim uh, 2011 canister filter. Uh, Eheim makes a 2011, 2015, 2017 of these canister filters. Uh, I think this is on the, the smaller side of the e -high. I don't know if they make one even smaller than the 2011. But anyhow, um, like uh, it says, I use a canister filter. Like you described in your video three years ago, aquarium is placed in my study, used uh, as a substrate with polyfilter sand, one to two millimeters, no seal to add it. And he, the, of course, here's a photo of his aquarium that you're looking at. Um, Anna Plenum made a BCB basket like you did on your ADA uh, canister filter. Because I couldn't find the right kitty litter and laterite, I use a uh, zealot, which is probably what we would call a uh, zealite, and sea chem fluorite red instead, you suggested in your channel. Uh, see photo of uh, BCB basket and Eheim 2211. Okay, so in that photo is a 2211. The basket is 7 meters in diameter by 11 meters tall. And uh, let's see, then he describes the tank of what it has in it. Cardinal tetras, he has 8 cardinal tetras. Ja, Japonica shrimp, he has four. Otisinclus, he has five. Corydorus habrosus, he has four. And Neuritinas, he has four of them, those snails. Aquarium contains 50 liters of water, and I do a water change of 10 liters every week. Let's see. On the inlet of the filter, I place a sponge used by uh, sponge filters, and I squeeze it every week in the bucket uh, to remove water. Clean monthly the Eheim filter by replacing the filter wool and test the water with a JBL liquid test kit. The results a week ago were, and these are his results because he tested every, uh, KH was 6, pH was 7.5, NH4 was less than 0 0.05, NO2 less than 0 0.05, NO3 less than 0.5, and PO4 less than 0 0.02. No algae problems as I experienced earlier in my Rio 125. I am now going to do the same thing with my Rio 125 in our living room. Almost ready with the uh, technical aspects aspects of the BCB basket. 
Um, thank you for all your effort and your channel and also for your comments on my comments on your video. And uh, greetings from the Netherlands, Paul. Anyhow, this, this goes to show you that uh, uh, he made a tank to experiment with and he's had no algae problems. Of course, his uh, NO3 is 0.5 which is very low, and uh, his PO4 is, is less than 0 0.02 parts. Now, I don't know if that's parts per million or parts per liter. I guess it doesn't really matter whether, because it's the same thing. He's probably reading parts per liter if he's in the Netherlands, just because he, he'll use metric. But anyhow, I wanted to uh, show you some of his, his pictures here of the tank he sent me. He probably will send me more. Uh, but this is, this this just goes to show you, uh, with several other emails I have received, I'm going to try to get to making videos of them. In fact, I like doing videos of uh, people who send me information like this because then it shows everybody out there what they made, and then it tells people of their success and their water parameters in case, you know, everybody wants to know that, of course. Well... What are they doing? What is their nitrates? What is their phosphate? And you know, that, that's pretty good if you think about phosphates down to 0 0.02 parts per million and uh, nitrates down to 0.5 parts per million. That's, uh, that's very, very low. And uh, no wonder he's not having any algae problems, okay? And if you look at his tank, it looks very nice. <clears throat> and this encourages other people to soon follow suit because I do understand really I understand people are very leery they they don't know what to do uh, lots of YouTube channels out there lots of different ways of doing it uh, it's very confusing there is no exact science with this aquarium hobby we all know that but it's nice to see that here's somebody that they did a little experiment and they're very successful with it because I do and I understand I have complaints sometimes of people saying that uh, you know the video was so long and I repeat myself you know the reason I repeat myself isn't that uh, I want to it's just that I used to teach uh, a lot of adults and when I say adults I'm talking about 21 years all the way up to 60 plus years old and when you teach adults versus teaching young people of 18, 19, 20 years old in college, and then you have to teach adults um, complicated things like uh, AutoCAD and programming and things like this, and they have to understand it and grasp it. Not all people, especially as they get older, can grasp things as easy as maybe a younger person. That's just the way the mind works. It's no longer uh, as agile as it used to be, and therefore when you start teaching adults, it becomes a little different story because you have to be repetitive, and maybe that's why I'm repetitive. Okay, I I know people complain about it that, hey, this, this video could have been two minutes and you had it 40 minutes long. And yes, I am repetitive because I try to repeat it in different ways. Because I notice that with older people, they don't understand just one way of telling them. You may have to repeat it in a different way. And because this is, of course, not a classroom where someone can say, you know, could you repeat that or I don't understand it. Because I've had a lot of... Uh, adults do that. And I know a lot of people take for granted that uh, maybe their memory is great, but not everybody's memory is, is as good as the other person's. And therefore, I sympathize with people like that because I have taught people like that. That is just the way Mother Nature plays her little games as people get older. And yeah, I was lucky enough that if an IT person came out and showed me something on my computer, I was able to grasp it, and then four or five months later, uh, I could correct the problem. But, you know, if, if they did something like that, like an IT person came out and did something, the person I was teaching, I would say, well, you know, here, the problem is here again. Why don't you fix it? And they couldn't remember how to fix it. Okay, so 
this just shows you that as people get older, <coughs> um, their memory isn't as good, or they may have to be shown in different ways. And it's up to the teacher to teach them in different ways so they all will rem remember it and not just a few. So there's not much I can do about that. Like I've told people, um, sorry, there's not much I can really do about it. Uh, the only thing I can say, if, the, if my channel is boring, that maybe you may uh, want to go to a different channel that, uh, that doesn't teach us such things as I do. But other than that, I don't know what else to do because I do have a very wide audience throughout the world and I must cater to them. And believe it or not, we Americans, uh, like for example, when I was in Spain and I speak Spanish and I was in Spain and I'd have to ask them, you know, hey, slow down a little bit. You know, I know Spanish, but not as good as you got. And they would laugh, you know. And they said, you Americans, when you talk, you talk so fast to us. We can't understand you, okay? We don't understand that in, in the United States, that people in other countries, uh, they may not understand us because we do speak so fast to them that they may know English, but they don't know English as good as we know it. And because of our different dialects and everything else we have in the United States, that they have to try to filter through that. Uh, in order to understand our language. And people don't understand. I didn't know that, that uh, it seems like we speak at the at the speed of light to a lot of Spanish-speaking sp people. So that that's, that's something uh, I, I can't solve. You know, I think it's a habit I'm into where I am repetitive and try to explain it a different way. So those people who did not catch on try to catch on. Because really, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't want to see you fail. Because, uh, you know, it, it's no good if you fail. So I, I try my best to make sure everybody understands what I'm talking about. And it, it, it's not easy. And I know some of you out there are very smart because I talk to some very brilliant people. And for them, I'm sure this is this is very, very easy or boring. I remember reading magazines like that, uh, 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 Tropical Fish Hobbyist Magazine, Aquarium Magazine, I would read and, and you'd see these articles, uh, let's say about guppies or, or mollies, and it's like, uh, duh, you know. But you got to remember, the magazine has to cater to the beginner and then has to cater to the more experienced hobbyists out there. So the magazines trying to have a plethora of, of information for all the hobbyists out there. And I think this is something that I have learned to do by teaching elderly people how to do complicated AutoCAD or how to do complicated programming or how to uh, make something work that... Uh, doesn't work on a piece of machinery or something like that as an engineer. And uh, sometimes even the people who designed the machine could not get a program to work off of what we were using. And therefore, I would have to solve the problem myself. My boss would say, you know, just, just solve the problem. And I'd solve the problem. Then I would have to teach how to do it to the person I was teaching, so they knew how to solve the problem. But when they tried to solve the problem, I would say, you know what, why don't you try to solve this problem instead of me so solving the problem? And they couldn't do it. You know, they just kept repetitively doing the same thing over and over again, thinking they would get different results, and it didn't work. So I finally had to solve the problem so uh, they could use the program on a piece of machinery or something else that they were using. So I've learned this and I that's just the way it is. Anyhow, uh, thank you for the letters. I got a lot more. I'm trying to get organized that very nice people have sent me uh, asking questions, sent me pictures of their aquarium and I thought I'd do this short video to let you see. I like these videos, these, because it lets you know exactly what other hobbyists throughout the world are doing and what they're using 
and how their success is going without exactly using what we can in the United States. Because uh, we're kind of spoiled in the United States because all this stuff I talk about is very available to us. And you don't realize it's not available to everybody in South America, Africa, uh, you know, United Kingdom, uh, the Netherlands, uh, uh, Morocco. You, I can go on and on and on. Okay? So I hope you enjoyed the video. At least maybe if you see somebody else else's aquarium and how they did it and what the maintenance is. And, and be believe it or not, I'm very impressed with uh, nit nitrate levels of 0.5 and phosphates level down to 0 0.02. I mean, the, we're getting into saltwater territory here where saltwater hobbyists are trying to achieve what we freshwater hobbyists are doing without making all these expensive uh, uh, refrugums and stuff like that with extra light and you have to have a plant and you have to this and you, got, you know what I mean? So we're achieving what they wish they could achieve without all the equipment that they have to buy to achieve the same goals as what this gentleman has achieved. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, this is Dr. Novak, and happy fish keeping.